geologists measure conductive heat flow out of the earth by drilling holes a few hundred meters deep measuring the temperature as a function of depth uh, suppose that in a certain location uh, the temperature increases by 20 degrees for every kilometer they dig and the thermal conductivity is two and a half that's our kt um, in Fourier law of conduction what is the rate of heat conduction per square meter so per area uh, what is the rate of heat conduction now we could use Fourier's law of conduction uh, listed in the section Fourier heat conduction law to figure out uh, the rate we know that uh, that law says that Q over delta T and I'm gonna use absolute value here because heat is being lost that's minus uh, the uh, uh, thermal conductivity constant uh, times the area times dt over dx okay well this is our kt it's given here uh, we know that we need this per area so in other words i'm calculating q over delta t per unit area per one meter square uh, and if I take the absolute value here this will just be kt times change in temperature per change in depth uh, which I'm told it's 20 degrees per kilometer of depth so for every that's what dt over dx is for every change uh, for one meter depth in x the temperature changes by 20 degrees that's the meaning of the derivative so uh, that is just uh, so it's right here dt over dx uh, or delta t over delta x okay so this is 2.5 oops 2.5 watts per meter kelvin Uh, times uh, dt over dx is we said 20 degrees so per meter Kelvin uh, so since this is a change uh, whether it's Kelvin or Celsius it doesn't really make any difference uh, so I could leave this as Kelvin and then do this 20 um, Uh, 20 uh, Kelvin change because that's just because dt is delta t which is t2 minus t1 and then uh, this is per meter or kilometer one kilometer we would have to convert this so every one kilometer is 1000 meters so that these guys would go away Kelvin would cross Kelvin meters would go with meters and we would get the answer in watts. So plugging this in, uh, we get we get 0 0.05 watts. So that's the energy uh, per unit time. Uh, per area right mm. okay and uh, now this doesn't seem much but then um, if this is going on in one square meter of area and if we assume that the earth is uh, assuming that this value is typical in every location on the earth's surface well we have uh, that's for an area of one meter square if we generalize this to the area of the entire earth and uh, assuming that the earth is spherical so the area of the earth would be the area of the sphere uh, then uh, to figure out uh, the rate i would have to multiply this number by the area of the earth so the area of the sphere 
uh, which would be assuming it's a sphere it's four thirds pi r squared or oh, sorry four uh, pi r squared that's the volume four pi r squared that's the radius of the earth let's make it capital R and uh, so this would be 0 0.5 times 4 pi times uh, the radius of the earth is uh, Look that up really quick. I think it's around 6,400 kilometers. Kilometers. If I change it to meters, I multiply it by 10 to the third. Uh, so I would get. Uh, so by the way, this here was per meter square, right? Because we're dividing by the area. Yeah, so that's per unit area. Okay, so this is uh, uh, pi r squared so squared and this here is in watts mm -hmm. and so we get I get uh Two point five five uh, times. Oops, sorry. This is zero point zero five. Yeah, uh, times ten to the thirteen watts. So uh, this seems very large. Uh, that we are losing this much heat by conduction out of the Earth's surface. But keep in mind, uh, we are getting much more uh, wattage from the sun. Uh, uh, in those hours that the sun hits the earth uh, I forgot what the number is but it's 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 much larger than this um, I think it's almost double uh, that we get so 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 considering that this would seem insignificant how much energy we're losing in uh, uh, in this process uh, this concludes the question